Jersey City is very similar to growing up in New York as far as it's a city, it's big, a lot of people, opportunities, things like that. But as far as like the culture in Jersey City, it's different. It was cool though, because you get to see New York from that perspective, like get to see the skyline, chill at the waterfront. But it is a city, so you have the ruggedness of it, and then you have the good of it. So it was where you were hanging out, at what time, with who, that determined how that went for you. I was definitely the only girl for like a, a long time, but it definitely didn't define my experience as a skater. When I was in school, there was no places to skate and learn anything. So actually I actually had start, started trying to push a skate program for the school. It, it wasn't gonna happen while I was there, you know? A lot of things to write, a lot of people to convince. So my little skate park growing up, it was an abandoned hockey rink. So when you pull up to the park, it's like, just this tall fence. Sometimes it would be locked, sometimes it wouldn't. There was like little boxes that someone built, maybe like one flat part that kept getting stolen. And then eventually we got ramps and stuff and that's where I started going there a lot more. At the time it was just like the smoothest ground in comparison to skating like the street, even though it wasn't much. It, it helped me excel in my skating so much just because it was more things there than in front of my house. And it might not have been the best, sure wasn't was like the worst, you know? Also, when I feel like when you grow up skating something so sketchy like that, anything after that is like a sick setup. I would go to New York on the weekends, whenever we were off school, we had vacations, so much stuff to see, like skate spots, skate parks, good food, taxi cabs, live music on the street, big buildings, the water you can go look at, people playing chess, people dancing. You can meet some random people on your way to do something and they're really cool. It almost just feels like lawless for some reason as a kid, just because you just you know you're gonna have to take the train back home to so just be in the street, get kicked out, make a big deal out of it, but don't, you know? When I was old enough to make a move, uh, I chose not to go to New York just because everything skateboarding that I saw was coming out from LA. And I kind of knew that was just the place that I had to be. Once I got here, I got a job at a pizza shop. I got into a routine where I would make it happen though. Like if I worked in the morning, I would skate at night. If I had the night shift, I would skate in the morning. It just had to be done that way. I couldn't just only skate on my days off, you know? Especially when you're on a mission to get stuff done. I think the dream stayed alive just because I was surrounded by people that also were skaters and had dreams as well. I didn't know Street League was going to work out that way, honestly. It would cross my mind like, you know, one day that would be really cool. And then when I went to London, the same thing, I was like, one day that would be really cool. And I guess that was the day. It was very surreal. It's still surreal. Like when they hand you the trophy and they get to lift it, like, I've always thought that that would be cool. So to actually happen, wasn't prepared. Probably the best day of my life, for sure. And we have Jen Soto, the winner, Jen Soto. 2018 SLS London Women's Pro Open winner, Jen Soto. What a great women's final we had here today in London. Exceptional skateboarding.